And uh, I have received very good feedback even from the Rukun Tatanga of USJ 13, USJ 11, uh, USJ 3 ABCD, okay, and a lot of other individuals are saying, telling, emailing to us uh, on how the new traffic change has benefited them. They only take 10 minutes to go out now. Okay, have you benefited from it? Okay, it was really not easy for the first one week we had to stand there six something in the morning and just with the entire team. Um, it's, um, at the moment we are still trying to look for permanent solution because you see now we have to place cones, we have to have enforcement officers to make sure people don't cut queue. Uh, so we are still assessing the whole thing and we just had our meeting last week. Uh, we have received feedback, some negative feedback from a few USJ2 residents. Uh, they feel they are penalized and they feel they are the original residents of USJ. Uh, why should they go further down the road just to make a U-turn? They should be entitled to make the U-turn and go out. Okay, so these few residents of USJ2 have decided to vote me out in the next election because <laughs> I do not protect their interests. Okay, so I say I have to look after the majority. Okay, and if this helps everybody, then we have to stick with this. Okay, we are a long way from having a very good public transportation. So whatever we can do, we do. The seven to join is under MPSJ. That's why we can do the changes as and when uh, we like at the state level. But the seven Kawajipan is different at the summit road. The summit side, uh, that road is not under MPSJ. That road is under JKR. It's a federal road. Okay, so I don't have a say in how that project should be completed and all that. Okay, that's completely under JKR. Uh, but that um, Klana link should be completed by this year. Uh, there was a slight delay because of the pedestrian bridge issue. Uh, they went to court and uh, the contractor won. So that's why the pedestrian bridge has been removed and now work has resumed. Even for Pasiaran Kawajipan, I have received feedback. They say it's good. Uh, traffic has tremendously improved. And uh, now I have the Kota Kamuni residents emailing me to complain and say, why do you speak up for the Subanja people? Now we have to queue six kilometers at Kasas. Okay? So I am mindful that I act for the benefit of Subanja residents, uh, so I just have to stick with this. Okay? Um, I, ask, I ask that if you uh, feel that you have benefited from this traffic traffic changes on Persian to join, please give your support to uh, MPSJ. On my blog, there is an email, Ari Fudin. Please email him because what we have, uh, usually people are not very generous in compliments. They don't tell you when you think, when they think you're doing something right. So people keep quiet, okay? Those people who don't like it, they complain. So the feedback from the MPSJ, from local council will be, oh, people don't like this. So we need to hear the positive feedback. If you like the traffic changes, you must give your feedback to MPSJ so they know that there is a lot of people benefiting from this. Okay. Now, for USJ 13 residents, uh, the other day I came and I met up with the committee of Rukun Tetanga. They are seated here. Edwin, can you stand up with your committee members? Okay, this is for the USJ 13 residents. This is your committee. Okay. There are the Rukun Tetanga here and they have been uh, struggling uh, to get everybody in USJ 13 together uh, to fight crime and to patrol the streets or to get some sort of agreement on how they want to move forward with the security services in USJ 13. Uh, for USJ 12, I have yet to meet the committee. Uh, if you have one, please come and see me. So USJ 13 people, I know you have requested for a pedestrian bridge here for the school for the students to cross over to USJ 11. Uh, this week in MPSJ infrastructure meeting, I have highlighted this and they say that they will put this request in for, last ne for next year. Okay, this year's budget uh, has been allocated. So priority will go to one pedestrian bridge in USJ 6. You know where the metro bus station is. You see a lot of people trying to cross Pasiran Kawajipan and some school students have been killed there. So for this year, the priority will go to that and USJ 13 will come next year. Okay, you have also asked USJ 13 residents for speed breakers on the main road so that cars will slow down a little so that you can come in and go out easily. So that has been requested at MPSJ. MPSJ engineering department is looking into it. Okay, LRT. What is the status of LRT in Subang Jaya? I don't know. Okay, I really do not know. Last year, we have been asking for the Ministry of Transport to tell us on the uh, 
proposed route because once they have the route, okay, they have to table it for residents to give feedback. They have to table it three months under the Railway Act. Okay, uh, so we have been writing, MPSG has been writing to Prasarana, uh, but we have yet to hear from them. Uh, all we uh, see is people doing soil tests. Okay, so maybe they are testing to see which uh, route is suitable, which is not. Okay, as of today, I have not received any official route uh, proposed by Prasarana or Ministry of Transport. When I have it, we will let you know again. Unsustainable, unsustainable development, that was one of the promises I made during election. I understand that Subang Jaya is overdeveloped, okay, and uh, I say during my time, I will try to put a stop to any unsustainable development. Okay, people don't understand. People think I'm against development. I am not against development. I am against unsustainable development. There is a big difference. Okay, uh, so in Subang Jaya, the biggest issue at the moment is the USJ 6 Telecom land. I don't know how many of you read about it in the papers again today. I recall for a press conference, we highlighted it once more. The land opposite True Fitness, opposite True Fitness, you see an empty plot of land. That's a la the piece of land belongs to Telecom. Okay, so what has happened? Right after we won, a developer, not the landowner, the landowner is, a, is Telecom, developer is someone else. Developer put in a proposal to propose to develop a nine-story commercial building in front of the residents' houses. So we went for a public hearing, uh, a lot of things were not furnished at the time, were not done, traffic impact assessment study was not done. We asked the question on how a utility land can suddenly become a commercial land. We didn't have the answer at the time. And so OSC deliberated and OSC couldn't make a decision. OSC passed it up to State Planning Committee. State Planning Committee is at the state level. Okay, State Planning Committee says, well, the title says it's commercial. Okay, so we cannot stop it. And then after that, uh, they approved it. They approved that development. Uh, and in the last March, I actually received additional info uh, on, on the history of that piece of land. So I raised it at the State Assembly.